Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the Giver Marketing Masterclass. We're gonna be discussing LinkedIn today. So I'm gonna share the screen here and get us going as we prepare. If there's any questions or if you're not able to hear me for some reason, I'm gonna mute everybody that pops in on the class this morning. And as you know, we meet every Tuesday morning, 8 a.m. Pacific time, to walk through best practices in marketing. Um, we are the highest rated reviewed marketing network of specialists in the country, and we're proud of it. And we're here to help you increase those revenue generating results, those marketing activities. Um, as we kind of prepare and wait for others to come on the masterclass this morning, um, it's important to note that if you do need to reach out to us, we do have a private group page that you can request access to, and that'll trigger a conversation to see if you'd be a good fit for the tribe. Um, next session or several, next several sessions, we'll be discussing topics like social media best practices, tools and tips to help increase your efficiency um, that relates specifically to marketing activities because marketing can take a little bit of time to ramp up and we wanna help shortcut that for you, save you some time, obviously um, increase the, the response rate of those that you'd be communicating with your audience. And so with that, we're gonna get started here in just a few minutes. And let me know that you can see the chat box um, as we pop in here this morning. Just give me a yes, sure, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Chat away, excellent. All right, all right. Good, good, good. Excellent, make sure everybody's technology is dialed in. Good, good, good. Grab that chat box if you hover down below in the Zoom control panels, it should give you an option for a chat box, depending on what your device, what device you are on. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> All right, I'm getting some comments about no hat this morning. I, I like wearing my little uh, golf hat sometimes, depending on what mood I'm in. So this morning we're going without the hat. <laughs> All right. Good. Well, it's eight o'clock. Uh, out of respect for everyone's time and be able to leave questions for the end of our training today, please um, buckle up. Let's, let's jump right into it. We're going to be discussing LinkedIn today in a way that uh, maybe you've heard a little bit of before, but there's going to be some nuggets in here. So feel free to take screenshots, um, revisit this when we get um, get you access to the Giver Marketing private group page. You can you can revisit some of these notes as well. But please take screenshots because some of this stuff, if you miss it, it could cost you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of appointments. And so we want to make sure and get you as many booked appointments on your calendar as possible. And that is the difference between this training and maybe some of the others that you might have come across. Uh, and you will come across some. Um, where folks are, are, are not necessarily using their own methods. Well, we use our own methods. We book appointments consistently. Um, 2019, we booked over 500 appointments. We're looking to do much more than that moving forward. And so we're glad to be able to pull back the curtain and show you what we do in order to help generate those business to business appointments. But also it's, increasingly becoming um, obvious that the B2C space is paying attention to LinkedIn as well, uh, not only with the posts and just the activity and the interaction, but these messaging sequences and communication starters are starting to become extremely powerful, especially in like the financial world, real estate world, insurance world, uh, where you're getting a mix of kind of that the B2C and B2B conversations that you want to get started, okay? I'm Timothy Morgan, founder, your marketing coach for the day. I'm glad to be able to help you. We are Giver Marketing, 
And um, let's jump right into some of the fun facts with LinkedIn, okay? Over 600 million users at the time of this recording, um, up, to, up nearly 50% since being acquired by Microsoft a few years back. Um, number one channel for business to business market, uh, marketers using different distribution channels and content. 80% of B2B leads, come, if you're looking at the top three, 80% come from LinkedIn. And then you got Twitter and Facebook right there. Okay, so depending on how you look at the stats, it's just impressive to note that LinkedIn is, is a giant in the room. Okay, 41% of millionaires are on the platform according to Omnicore. Uh, even if that's close to correct, <laughs> that is a great statistic to keep in mind as we're we're really looking at a platform that's different than most every platform you'll come across. 74% uh, versus 51% will use LinkedIn. Uh, again, top three, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, depending on how you look at the statistics. Of course, there's YouTube and Instagram is in the mix as well, okay? So this is a, another survey done by Chief Marketer in 2019 for business to business. Uh, statistics all right so what to expect from our training today hundreds of connections uh, we don't really use the term leads much anymore uh, leads you can buy for pennies somewhere and who knows how old they are <laughs> so we, we really prefer to use the term connections conversations appointments so that we're going to more a uh, uh, more rich and deep and meaningful um, connecting points with our audience, okay? So we're looking for booked appointments, ladies and gentlemen. That's the goal for today. No cold calling, unless you really enjoy chasing people, which some, some so look, some people are hunters. They just, they, they need to take a Monday and just go door knocking and chasing and cold calling. And, and, and if you enjoy doing that, great. This will be a supplement, or, or that, rather, that will be a supplement to what this could really do. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, that's a we we feel that cold calling is kind of an antiquated strategy in some respects, unless you really just enjoy doing that to get your juices flowing. <laughs> All right, so what is LinkedIn, and how is it better than Facebook or vice versa? Look, it, they're different. They're they're not they're not even really close to the same platform. But if you want to think of it this way, LinkedIn is Facebook with a suit on. It's a little bit more on the professional, the B2B side, business to business. Uh, Facebook has really more become more of like a world directory <laughs> where you can find people, message people, and reconnect with people on a more of a social level. LinkedIn has some social components that's starting to build more and more and more, uh, especially with the professional, okay? So depending on your industry, you're gonna use these platforms very differently. A typical results from what we're going to talk about today, 10 to 20 warm phone appointments monthly. Nothing crazy, but it's enough to get that calendar really dialed in. Get you moving in, in using this strategy. An average of 5 to 10% of contacts will book a call using our messaging sequence you're about to see and the scheduler method. Now, key, key word here, scheduler. You want to use a scheduler, and we're going to go right into that right now. If you're not familiar with these online schedulers where you can let other people see your calendar availability, then please feel free to ask questions in the chat box, and, and we'll jump right into it here, okay? Can I really do this myself? Yes. Pay close attention, take screenshots, ask questions. Join the Facebook mark, uh, private Facebook group. It's in the lower right corner of your screen. If you want to pop it in that way, um, I'm going to also try to put it in the chat box as we go along here. But bottom line is you can do this yourself. Okay. Um, I want to make sure that I type this in properly. Hold on. Give me a second. I'm going to get, get you that link in the chat box here, ladies and gentlemen, because I know you want it. GiverMarketing.com slash group. That way you can post any questions, follow up questions, and we got a team of dozens of people that are there to help, okay? All right. 
coaching. That's what I do. That's what I'm doing today. That's, that's my special sauce that I bring to the table. That's my, my superpower, if you will. And it's my privilege to draw out the potential within you and your team when it comes to marketing. Okay, I'm not a business coach. I'm not a business consultant. I'm a marketing specialist that loves coaching. Our tribe is the most trusted network of marketing specialists on the planet. I happen to be one of them. <laughs> and our clients have rated us the highest reviewed network of marketing specialists on the planet. You can Google Giver Marketing, uh, some of the team members' names, and that those those ratings and reviews should come up very quickly for you. Here's some what of our some of our associates and our clients and Team members have shared things like, hey, it's unlike anything I've ever come across before. Uh, the idea that we'll ad actually educate first before you sell, <laughs> we help you with done for you services is kind of a different approach. Uh, we've helped near nearly doubled several businesses uh, and Rick and Becky Kramer are one of those in the Northern California area. Our, our great core principles, <clears throat> if you wanna take a screenshot of this, this is a great way to live. <laughs> Generosity, look at res focus on re results, efficiency, attitude, transparency. If you're a business owner, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can't really ask for much more than the great core principles. All right. And that's how we function. So if we're ever um, out of bounds in those respects, let us know. We'll come right back into alignment with those principles. Okay. Who benefits from this? Live online marketing masterclass or the recording if you're watching it later is those who are hungry, they're coachable, they're passionate. It literally doesn't work for your time efficiency to sit through this if you're not coachable. So let's rock and roll. That's why you're here today. I want to make sure and honor your time, get you some great content, okay? All things being equal, we do business with people we know, like, and trust. Great quote by Bob Berg from The Go-Giver. I would also add, people pay more to those they respect. <laughs> All right. Giver Marketing Blueprint is based on four key components, branding, visibility, promotion, and nurturing. But first, we need to define marketing. Marketing is not the same as sales. They do work together. Uh, they're like the right and left leg of a person. <laughs> they are definitely um, two pistons to a, a small engine. But listen, uh, marketing is pre-sales strategy and communication. It happens before you get into the sales process. All right. And here's the last piece of the Giver Marketing Blueprint to get us set up and set the stage for LinkedIn training today. And really that's what LinkedIn is. It's an engaging, nurturing uh, platform for you to really leverage uh, this, the, the, the points of communication with your audience in a way that allows you to get closer to that sales conversation, okay? So this is what we consider like a, like a nurturing system on, on LinkedIn, okay? If marketing gets you to the, the red zone, then sales get you to the end zone. We're going to get you to the red zone today, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get you right up to that appointment. Uh, technically, prospecting is marketing because you're not, in a, you're not in a sales process yet. You're not giving them a good, better, best. You're not uh, making pitches, offers. We're, we're not going to talk about any of that today. We're just trying to get you to the appointment, okay? Marketing equals conversation, conversations and appointments. Marketing equals transactions and revenue, all right? All right, so here they are. This is what we do at Giver Marketing and how we nurture our conversations. And if we know 80% of sales appointments occur after five trust building interactions, we have to have this as a backdrop for our team, right? So what do we do in the introduction? Well, first of all, we don't sell anything. We tell a story and we get contact information. How refreshing would that be if people only did this? 
They didn't sell anything to you when they first talked to you. They told you their story and they just asked you for some basic information, contact information so they could follow up with you later in the appropriate timing and based on permission, which we'll talk about in a second. We send a brief email generally saying, hey, great connecting, learn, love to learn more about XYZ or your business. Then we ask a question at the end of almost every email. If you've received an email from me or our team, it generally includes some kind of question. Why? So we can engage in a dialogue, not a monologue. <laughs> Very important. All right. Social media connections. We're going to be talking about LinkedIn, so we don't get, need to go too deeply into this. But listen, uh, make those connection requests. Go from 50 to 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 connection requests on LinkedIn and Facebook. And Facebook maxed out at 5,000 on a personal level. But listen, there's ways to get a lot of connections going with your business pages and other things too. So make those connection requests. Reply to the messages. Share content. Don't be afraid to share other people's content. Give something of value. A referral. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about inviting people to an event here in a second. Um, give people resources that they already are asking for. A physical gift. I like giving Christmas gifts in July. I love doing things that are a little different, that are memorable. I like giving ho holiday cards, which we'll talk about in a second, really early in the season. So invite people places that you are already going to be. Um, Ray Fuentes and a few others on the training today, Chris Middleton, we're inviting each other to the events online and offline that we are already going to be at. What a great use of time. People find that to be very uh, comforting. They, they also find it to be uh, a way to uh, find out if you really know what you're doing. <laughs> they, uh, there, there's an authority and a, uh, a branding element to inviting people to where you're already going to be, especially if you're speaking, keynote talk, or part of a, just a great group or something, okay? Personal note, snail mail, text message, social media message. Notice a lot of these can be fulfilled just using LinkedIn. I mean, a social media message, a connection request, uh, different, uh, an email is triggered when you send an, a connection request through LinkedIn many times. So uh, literally half of the things that we're talking about here can already be uh, done through just a LinkedIn platform alone. And not to mention the almighty holy grail of the phone call, the, the 10, 15 minute phone call, prepare great questions, give two options for the next step before you get on the call. <laughs> know exactly what you would like to see happen. You're, if you already know a little bit about the person, just ask them more of their story and see what their needs are and try to help them. Short voice messages, please, if any. Don't use, don't use the phone to dial for dollars and leave voice messages. That, 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 that strategy worked 20 years ago. If you want a phone tree in your office and you just want – you know, robocalls going out and leaving messages, uh, talk to somebody else. That That is a short-term str strategy. It's just, it's not going to work long-term. What we want to see is conversations and appointments, okay? Just think about the feeling you get when, 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 when you're excited to talk with somebody on the phone and you set an appointment versus getting 15 robocalls and finally picking one up that there's a difference in how you want to represent your brand, okay? All right, move at the speed of trust. Don't try to sell too quickly, but hey, once the good fit is established, it's on. Let's help each other. Let's make it happen. I know you guys are trying to do some screenshots here. Let me know um, th that you can access the recording later in the private Facebook group, okay? Branding, visibility, promotion, nurturing. Again, this is the four pillars, the four steps in that order of the giver marketing blueprint, which sets the stage for the LinkedIn appointments strategy, ladies and gentlemen. 
We've literally zeroed in on this to the point to where just on my calendar alone, last May, we were able to book 70 appointments with no ad spend, no spam, no funnels, no complex, no bait and switch, nothing crazy, just very authentic conversation where people are expecting and excited to talk to you. They already know who you are because your LinkedIn profile is like a landing page for crying out loud, right? So all you need is these two things. Take a screenshot of this, please. You need a LinkedIn account, number one. You need an online scheduler, number two. An online scheduler lets people show when you're available. Don't worry, they can't see your private family events or anything like that, okay? You, you, you let the scheduler know what slots you would like to be available for appointments, and then it does the rest of the work. And I'm not, look, I'm not a sales representative for online schedulers. I'm just telling you, it saved, it's literally saved hundreds of hours and helped me book hundreds of appointments just in the last 12 months. So Calendly is a good one to start with. There's other ones out there. Book Like a Boss is another one. And yeah, I know I'm dropping names of different software, but start with Calendly. It gives you a free way to start one event for free and you just get start experimenting from there. If you want to create multiple events that have different like time frames, then they might charge you a few bucks a month or something. But look, we recommend setting up a 10 or 15 minute discovery call, get to know you call with a, we do a 10 minute call with a 10 minutes buffer on the back end and the front end. So what it ends up doing is it gives you a 30 minute block so that you're not feeling rushed. Maybe somebody does like to talk verbally process or whatever, like I do, <laughs> then give them a few extra minutes. Right. And uh, I guard my time because of the, the role that I play in companies, but for you, it might be a 15 minute call. Right. But don't, 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 don't tell people you want to meet with them for 45 minutes on the phone and then an hour and a half in person. Like don't, people don't even know you yet. Just get a discovery or an exploration call going and watch the magic unfold, right? All right, a lot of people ask about the actual profile page, your personal profile page on LinkedIn. This is the most common question. Well, am I ready for, for all, these, all this traffic and all these people coming and looking at my page? Will, will you get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people coming and viewing your page, almost like a landing page? Yes. If you follow what we're doing here, you'll, you'll get a lot of traffic, okay? You wanna have some basic things dialed in. You wanna have a human element up in that cover image. See that hand reaching out there? You want to definitely have a good profile picture. Many, most of you do on the training. I've seen, I've seen your profiles and those listening to the recording. Make sure you got a human element everywhere on your. It makes it interesting. Humans are designed. I'm a person of faith, so I'll say it this way: Humans were designed by God to notice other humans. So put them in your marketing. Make sure they're appropriate for what your, you know, what your brand is, but just put, put a human touch in what you're doing, okay? Keep your headlines short. Make sure the summary explains a little bit more. Put some media in there. Make sure your experience does not look like just a, like a full resume with 40 you know, different things that you've done over the last whatever years. Just put the th three or four things that are pertinent to your current career. Okay, your current business, especially you entrepreneurs, you've probably tried a dozen different things over the, <laughs> the last 20 years. Trim it down to what's pertinent to what you're doing now. This is not a resume anymore, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That This platform has outgrown that piece. All right, so this is a, a, an entrepreneur's tool, very different. All right, here's, here's some fun way to get started connecting with more people on LinkedIn. This is the second most popular question. How do I just get my connections ramped up from you know little to, to at least a modest level? And the way to do that is click on my network, go over to more options on the middle left section over there, 
I had to cut off the screen a little bit because for privacy of, of people's information. But that left side of that screen after you click My Network will show you an option to tie in your email addresses and send out connection requests. Let's say you have a, a couple of current email addresses, maybe one old email address. You can do all three. Have, have LinkedIn do the work for you just to get you up to a level where you're at, you know, 500 or more is really the goal you want to be at, okay? Uh, we have some clients have started with just a few hundred, and they've jumped up to several thousand because they've worked this system, okay? How nice would it be to have five, 10,000 prospects, if you will, in your drip system using LinkedIn at all times? Very nice. Continue dialogue with prospects by asking good questions. We use a permission marketing approach. Great book by Seth Godin. Looks like we have some good chatter going in the chat box. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and pop in there now and kind of see what, what everybody's saying. Good, 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 good. Got some good questions going. I'm gonna take them in order. This is a good place for a little pause here. No like and trust, good. No better way to ask, uh, get to know someone than to ask questions, good. You guys are reading all this, so. Okay, quick question. If I get directed to a, a voicemail or the client isn't in, uh, you know, at their desk on a cold call, do I just hang up? Look, I know your industry, David, <clears throat> but I would say this, if it if it's, if it's more valuable to get on the phone with them live than to leave a voicemail, then I would hang up. <laughs> I would call back later. I mean, you could leave a message at the front desk saying I uh, so and so called, but but uh, at the end of the day, you want to make sure and do whatever it takes to get in a live conversation. Bottom line, right? Um, and again, this is just prospecting, ladies and gentlemen. This is not sales. Uh, we're we're just, right now. If you want to think of it, we're just trying to get to a solid appointment. <laughs> That's the main the main focus here. So, all right. Others are saying I love Calendly. Uh, yeah, if you have to leave a voicemail, leave it uh, leave it really quick. Let me put it this way: We were training some mass mutual folks. Uh, you know, just that little thirty billion dollar company <laughs> recently down down the road of one of their branches and. Um, they said something interesting during this training. They said, if we leave long voicemails, what we're actually telling people is we don't want them to call us back. Let that sink in for just a second. And I would agree with that statement. If you leave long voicemails, you're actually saying, hey, here's all the information you need. Don't bother calling me back. Just, I'm probably gonna call you back anyway because I'm super you know, <laughs> verbose. <laughs> And it's just going to happen. So you're, you're giving signals that, A, uh, you don't really want them to call you back because you're going to give them all the information. B, if they do call you back, you're probably going to talk their ear off <laughs> because you left them a, a long message. So it's, it's almost a double negative to leave long voicemails. There are some rare exceptions, like if somebody needs something in a timely manner or uh, really all you need to do is give them a you know, some facts, and there really wasn't a need for a conversation, that's fine, but most cases, yeah, don't leave a voicemail. Ladies and gentlemen, we have other ways to make messages happen. All right, good. So I covered a few of those questions. Let's move on. All right, what makes LinkedIn special? It's their searching capabilities. It's their filters. It's the, it's the sheer numbers of people and all the data that you have available to you. And yeah, LinkedIn is a fairly responsible company from what I'm understanding, but at the end of the day, we love this information as professionals. We wanna be able to know who we're talking to on the other end of the line. So click on first degree, click on search, and you're gonna be able to find anybody in your own Rolodex, in your database on LinkedIn. You can search by city, industry, title. If you get into Sales Navigator, which we'll talk about later if we have time, um, headcount, um, 
multiple titles, negative key searches sometimes, like just different things you can do to make sure and connect with the right people. So if you click on first degree and you basically just push apply, it'll show you all your first degree connections. You can push some message and send them a message like this, just to get going. Let's say you had several hundred first degree connections, maybe even several thousand. The people you do want to talk to, let's say uh, maybe start in your region or something, or, or start with a certain industry that you want to target. Uh, if you have several hundred connections and you want to reach out to half of them, send them this. This will get your this will get your inbox lit up right here, because all you're doing is say it's been a while since we connected. Are you open to a quick call in the next couple of weeks? Depending on your industry, you might want to change the language slightly, but uh, don't make it, don't make it too long. Keep it one sentence if you can. I mean, that's, that's what we found shorter is better when it comes to these messaging sequences. Okay. We're not, we're not talking about long copy here. We're not talking about <laughs> uh, writing a novel. All right. We're not writing an ad. We're just asking for a quick phone call when the time is right. What will happen when you do this is you'll get your inbox just lighten up. So you want, you, what you'll want to do is go over to that little menu bar, the hamburger bar on the left side here in your inbox, and click on unread messages. You see that right there? So click on messaging in the um, main menu, and then you'll see unread messages over here on the left if you hit the hamburger bar. That saved a ton of time for our team. Just, just using the inbox properly, all right? Feel free to ask questions about that later. All right, so what happens if your current connections or even later your second degree connections, and your current connections are called first degree, by the way. So your current connections <clears throat> ask you, why do you wanna reconnect? It's been a while. Uh, maybe you connected with them because they were a high school friend or you, know, you haven't talked to them in a long time. Just tell them you want to discuss mutual benefit of some kind, maybe some introductions, referrals, catch up a little bit. I've used that, that language. Depending on who it is, you can use a slight variation of this mutual benefit language. All right? All right, what about the holy grail, the almighty appointment setting message? What is working right now? Well, if you send a message something like this, once they agree to a phone call, once they agree to reconnect, once they say, sure, yes, sounds good, then send them a message like this. Sounds great. So we don't play phone or message tag. Here are some days that would work best. Then you use that scheduler we're talking about. Pick a time and I'll call you then. Look forward to our quick chat. Keep it conversational. Remove business language from this message look unless you're literally like in the middle of a court case and you're a lawyer and you're trying to you know even then you wouldn't use this platform in this in that way right so this is a relational conversation starter period use that kind of language like you're talking to somebody at a networking group right just use that kind of language only send, let me say this very emphatically, only send appointment link, any kind of link, uh, a scheduler link, appoint, uh, email, uh, website, a video link, any kind of link. Once they only send those kind of things once they've given you permission. So in this case, don't only send appointment link once they've agreed to chat on the phone. So they've given you permission, now you can give them the scheduler. Do not combine these messages, ladies and gentlemen. A lot, a lot of people try to do that, and I will say you are not coachable. <laughs> Be coachable. Don't combine these messages. Keep them separate messages so it feels like a conversation. Does that make sense? Yes or yes? Yes, yes. All right, so that's your first degree connections. Well, Tim, how do we connect with our second degree? How do we blow this thing up? How do we make, make a splash here? I personally find that referrals and introductions are the most powerful 
foundation for any business, whether they're a billion dollar business or just starting out. The question is, is how do you leverage introductions and referrals? LinkedIn has the, a way to generate introductions and referrals like nothing I've ever seen. We stumbled onto this strategy, ladies and gentlemen. My intern started experimenting with it. And before you knew it, we had a, over, a, I think it was 200 referrals in the last couple of years using LinkedIn. They're, they would be considered light referrals or introductions probably. But still, those kind of introductions with a name that you can drop is, is the key, okay? So here's what you do. You get permission from an influencer to drop their name. <laughs> We've actually done this together uh, with some of the folks on the training today. So you, you, you know this works because I actually use this strategy and it creates great conversations. What you do is you end up connecting with the influencer's first degree connections. Basically their Rolodex becomes your messaging list. And all you do is add a note to your connection request which by the way, isn't penalized or doesn't cost you a dime through LinkedIn. That first note is, is fair game, it's free. So what you, you, what you do is you go into the searching capabilities on LinkedIn, instead of clicking first degree connections, click second degree connections. By the way, make sure first degree is unchecked when you're doing this, okay? Second degree connections, pop in an influencer's name. Let's call him Joe Smith for purposes of ex example. And then we begin connecting with their people. And you, you don't need to use in mail for this or anything fancy. It's just a, a note that you're adding to a connection request. So you click on connect. connect with the people that you want to connect with. And again, you can filter this. See the filter option up here? You can filter this down to the top 100 people or the top 1,000 people in, in your region or however you want to do it. Add a note. Here's the key, though. Drop the name. Hey, Joe Smith connected us. Would you have a few minutes to chat on the phone in the next couple of weeks? We've actually been experimenting with splitting this into two messages right here. But we know this one works, so we're training on this one, and we'll let you know the, the, the data that we get back on splitting this message into two. All right, but here, here's the bottom line. Joe Smith recommended we connect or connected us. Are you going to pay attention to that? Yeah, because they're, front, they're connected on LinkedIn. There's a social pressure. There's a good social pressure when somebody introduces you to somebody else, right? So we're gonna leverage that name and drop the note. You're gonna, your inbox is gonna light up. Many second degree connections will accept your request, but listen closely, but will not respond to the initial note. They get in a hurry, they just say accept, 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 accept. They don't read your notes. They think maybe somebody's trying to sell them something or whatever. That's okay. Just circle back with them later. All right. Send them a note, just a, a note with a slightly different language, sort of similar, uh, saying thanks for connecting. Should we go ahead and grab that quick call soon or that phone conversation soon? Maybe change up the language slightly so it doesn't look like it's a copy paste <laughs> even though it might be all right no influencer permission i'm not even going to spend time on this but but if you want to take a screenshot you can look at this later okay we we prefer the influencer permission strategy it's five times the results you'll see with just about anything else people who send you requests I had to add this uh, part of the training in because you start getting so much traffic. Uh, the algorithms like, like what you're doing. And before you know it, you start getting people requesting to connect with you. And so you go through your several dozen or whatever connection requests coming toward you. 
And then you just pick out the five or 10 that you want to connect with, get on the phone, and you send them a quick note. I accepted your connection request. Are you open to a quick call in the next couple of weeks? Again, a little bit of pressure there because they're the one connecting with you. And you say, hey, connect. Oh, I connected. Thanks for reaching out. Would you like to grab a quick call soon? What are they going to say? No. Why did, you know, why did you message me? <laughs> they're the one that reached out to you. So, all right. Good. LinkedIn paid options. Uh, look, for $80 a month or less, you can get some pretty fun bells and whistles with LinkedIn Premium, Sales Navigator. This is when all the questions start coming up. Like, what do you think about Sales Navigator versus Premium? Look, they give you a free trial of this stuff anyway, so just try them. You use what you think is needed for your company and how much time you're going to spend on the platform. I can tell you some of our clients use Sales Navigator. I've used it. Um, off and on, depending on what I'm trying to do in, on my personal profile. Um, I always recommend premium because then you have unlimited ability to go ahead and search out for people and um, get data and metrics and different things coming back to you. So it's worth paying the 60, 80 bucks a month at the time of this recording. Uh, but again, you can get some trials of this stuff too. You just ask them for it or search for it, it'll, it'll come up. All right, so LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Let's, let's dive into some tools really quick and then we're gonna answer some questions, okay? Sales Navigator allows you to integrate into uh, software like uh, Salesforce. It almost functions like a beginning stage CRM in a way because you, you can save lists you can tag people, you can uh, search a little deeper, like headcount over here on the left, you can see uh, companies with 11 to 50 people on them, or you know, titles, co-founder, founder, president, principal, CEO, whatever. You can do more robust searches, save lists, those kind of things, okay? It has its own inbox, so you can kind of separate that out if you need to. This is just advanced, uh, functions on LinkedIn. Okay. So th that's the LinkedIn basic training. We're going to talk about a couple of pieces of software that I recommend for those who want to really go to another level. Um, but here's your homework, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, at least, this is bare minimum, 100 messages weekly, 30 minutes on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, will get you a good start to booking appointments on your calendar, okay? And you're not gonna be chasing people, going back and forth, discussing what time to meet and wh what phone number to call. All, all that stuff's gonna be done through your scheduler. And LinkedIn has a lot, a, a lot of contact information as well. So you're not gonna be asking for a bunch of information from people. You're just gonna send them a link, they're gonna schedule the appointment and you're gonna call them, all right? It makes everything super streamlined. If you have any questions, you can screenshot this or you can Google my name. Different e uh, This email address is really good for us to be able to answer any questions. Q at givermarketing.com. Here's a fun little tool. We, we made a, um, a redirect link for you to learn a little bit more details of how LinkedIn actually grades their pro the profile your profile and i wouldn't say a hundred percent of it is uh best practices for every industry but i would say this linkedin likes it <laughs> so if you want to get your uh profile to a place where they're kind of grading you at a higher level and you you feel like that's something that would benefit your company then th this would be worth looking at givermarketing.com slash profile. Crystal Nose is a phenomenal tool. Uh, there's a free trial for this as well, and then it's a few dollars a month. I'm trying to remember now, but uh, crystalnose.com will help you find somebody's personality on LinkedIn right before you get on the call with a click of a button. You'll have just about every personality trait you're going to want <laughs> right there in a nice little format and it pops up on a, on the right side of your screen super helpful 
Here's another uh, software that we're using. Someone in-house built this because we were seeing such great results with LinkedIn. We said, hey, can you, can you, can you allow us to, to go ahead and just beta test this and use this? And we have, and we're seeing extraordinary results. It's basically the first message or two you send out is automated <clears throat> and it's targeted. And then you take up the conversation from there. And so it'll stop sending messages once somebody replies. You, you set it up in a way that makes sense for you, okay? Um, we're seeing as high as 50% connection rate with the software, um, 20 plus percent response rate. This is what we want, ladies and gentlemen. It's like early days of email. <laughs> people actually read read your emails 20 years ago, you know? And right now, what this is what we're seeing in LinkedIn, okay? So uh, the days of kind of sending out cold emails without any context are pretty much over. Um, we're, we're moving to these social media platforms, messaging platforms, even in some cases, some other types of platforms too. But when it comes to LinkedIn, you're gonna wanna uh, ask me about this software once you get ramped up, once you get going. Okay, because this this will take you from from good to great. All right. So that's the LinkedIn strategy, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions about the software, about um, Crystal Knows, about language, uh, let's start lighting up the chat box. I'll go look through them here in just a, a second. Next week, we're going to be talking about tips and tools for time efficiency. Uh, we talked about one of them today, and that's Calendly or a scheduler of some kind, right? Um, some of our team members have been experimenting with some of the other schedulers out there. Uh, all I would recommend is that whatever scheduler you pick, um, make sure that they register the time zone that you're in and that it sends out email uh, reminders and invites to the person's calendar automatically. So they're not having to copy paste into their own calendar. I don't know how many times that's been super helpful. All right. So whether it's Calendly or Book Like a Boss or some of these other platforms, we want to recommend that you get a scheduler dialed in. ASAP, my friends. All right. Let's jump into the chat box, see what we got going there. You're welcome to unmute yourself as well if you're more of a verbal question asker. <laughs> Give me one second here as we unmute uh, or, or as you unmute yourself um, as I read the questions here. Good, good. I leave a message the first time, but uh, call often. <clears throat> Somebody said, yeah, if you leave a short, 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 short message like, uh, and we're talking about the phone call here. Um, Hey, it's Timothy Morgan. Um, had a quick question for you. When you get a minute, here's my number. Repeat it twice. You, you really, <clears throat> depending on who it is and how well you know them, you really don't need to give them more than that uh, most of the time. Good. Do they get a chance to include their phone number if I don't have it? Uh, when it comes to the messaging, Ray, is that what you're talking about? If you want to unmute yourself, we can – here, I'll do it for you. There you go. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. So um, if I'm meeting somebody on LinkedIn, sometimes their phone number is not there. Correct. Yeah, sometimes and so, it's not. Right? So um, I wasn't sure how to get the phone number, but uh, in Calendly, you can set up another question. Correct. Which is the phone number. I found that out after I sent the text. Correct. No, no, no. Uh, thank you for bringing it up because it's a common question that I, I sometimes because of you have outsight here, right? Uh, sometimes I'm in the forest and I forget the, the nuances that, that can be very helpful here. So bottom line is make sure you have a place for people to pop their phone number in. In fact, that's pretty much all you really need is your, their email and, their, and your phone number. You don't want to ask them for their address and a bunch of other stuff on the calendar. This is not a, 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 a an information grab initial, 
essentially. It, it's basically just a, a way to set up the, the call. But yeah, look, by the time you're done, you do have their email and their phone number and their name and the context. And you know you found them on LinkedIn. So you got a lot of information to be able to pop in your database. And um, actually, that software I mentioned to you before, it'll also, uh, I don't know if I want to record this. It'll do some special, extra special bells and whistles. Let's just put it that way when it comes to grabbing pertinent data for your database. Okay. <laughs> hey, um, Tim. Yeah. Question. So um, when sending emails through LinkedIn, um, so I've started using a like bombbomb.com for sure. video sure. messaging. Yep. Does LinkedIn allow you to embed a video like that? LinkedIn allows you to pop links in. It allows you to do voice messaging. It allows you to, yes, I believe there's a, a capability to put uh, images and attachments. And I believe vid videos are becoming more native now to that platform. So I'm, I'm going to say I'm almost 100% sure. We don't do that ourselves. So I'm not going to give you like the, you know, the thumbs up on that, that'll even stay in place forever. <laughs> yeah. But I will say this, if you got a good video, which I know you do, because I've seen your videos, same with you, Ray, and others on the, on the training, um, wait for it. Wait to get the, share, share that video. Just wait for the right time. And well, you, 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 you have good instincts and bomb bomb gives you some good, guidelines on that and you'll do great um yeah. but but for others that are listening wait for it do not throw up videos and links on people before you've even had a chance to get on the phone now look once they book the appointment get them everything you want they can they can they can take a look at it or not and but phrase it in that way hey look forward to our appointment check out this video for context uh, to save us a little bit of time. I'm excited to talk to you. I think, um, so just to clarify, so video, it's, it's a individual, like I met with somebody yesterday and I sent her, I recorded a 30 second, Hey Tammy, it was super great to meet you. Thank you for, you know, she shared something with me and I was like, thank you for sharing that. I'm going to implement that. And so I sent her a, an individual video that was recorded on the spot. Yes. Um, yes. 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 That, that's what I'm talking about as far yes. as video in LinkedIn. Yes. Once, uh, once they've engaged in a conversation, and, and, and especially if you're leading toward that phone call, I, I, would, <clears throat> I would just – I would still be careful of how much you come at them with even personalized stuff before they book the call. Like all we want – right now is we want something on the calendar, right? So once they book the call, boom, go right into, it. hey, it was great, you know, talking with you on the phone or connecting with you or I look forward to our call. Yes, Chris, that's a great idea. Great job. Yeah. Cool. Does that make sense though, the, the dialogue, you know? Okay, cool. What other questions do we have about phone calls, appointments, messaging? getting their data, the sequencing. Sometimes people start asking you strange questions. If you have any thoughts on that or, or want to know how to handle that, we have a couple of minutes here. I'm, I'm, I'm here for you to, to have that dialogue as well. It's a little bit deeper into the, into the weeds, but I think with the people that are on the training, I think we, we should have some good dialogue about those kind of things if needed. I'll give you an example to kind of get us going that direction for two minutes. If somebody says, hey, um, thanks for the message, not interested, now we have something else we want to maybe put into the mix, another, another template or another phrase. I, I personally like to treat the, the uh, uninformed rejection <laughs> with this kind of 
tone. Hey, uh, no worries. Uh, just wanted to learn a little bit more about what you're doing. I'll circle back later. No pressure. I use the no pressure language basically at the end of the day. Um, all right, what other questions do we have here? Mercy says, how much context should you include in your LinkedIn message when connecting with a second degree connection? Great question. So Mercy, there's, depending on your industry and what you're actually, how hard it is to get on the phone or get an appointment, some industries like we work with some lawyers, some commercial real estate type or contractor types, you're going to probably want to give a little context if you if you can but really the power is in them being able to check you out on linkedin and if you're dropping names for those second degree anyway let me uh, let's just put it this way um you and i know a mutual friend he's on the training right now john okay I just drop. I'm, I'm in the middle. I'm, literally, right now, our software is dropping his name to hundreds of people on LinkedIn as we speak. Okay, I'm going to get five to ten percent of those. Say, sure, sounds good. Love to grab a quick call if you know John. That's who I want to pay attention to, right? Because I'm dropping those names. If you want to give a little bit more context, like, hey, we. We run in some of the same circles. We're from the same area. I've used that language before, but I would not get too much into the weeds. Don't think factually, think relationally. They don't need more facts. They need more connection with people who actually know what they're doing and care. <laughs> in this world of people just trying to spam them all over the place, don't give too much information. So maybe a little context, but not, not much. Okay. Good question. Really good question. Because what will happen is people will take this template and they'll build on it and start adding and start adding and start adding and combining. And before you know it, they got a novel they're given to everybody on their platform and on their, in their database. And they're asking me, why isn't it working? And I said, cause you made the message a, a pitch you're you're not asking for a conversation you're asking for a sale and we haven't even gotten to the phone call yet you're putting the cart before the horse ladies and gentlemen that that's what happens sometimes so what i would recommend if you're going to do anything like what we're experimenting with right now is actually splitting some of these messages into two do it this way not 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 that way okay so uh, experiment with different phrases, language, but keep a very similar, short, sweet message that's relational and you should be good. All right. Good. Well, we're coming to the end of our time today. If you would like to have more conversations about this, hit me up on LinkedIn. I mean, make it simple. Let's make this simple. Uh, go to the private group page that you see on your screen right there that I put in the early part of the chat box. Grab that before we close down our uh, training today. Uh, click on that link. Make sure you're, you have access to the private group page. Most of you do because as paying clients and power partners and those who we're, we're allowing to have in the private group page, uh, you have access to this recording. You have access to previous recordings, conversations, examples. We give homework assignments to some of our uh, almost all of our team members and clients, um, they're, they're actually the same homework assignment, so we're all on the same page. But uh, I digress. If you want to learn more about what we're doing to be able to help you not only book appointments, but just get your whole marketing dialed in. I function as an interim CMO in some cases, chief marketing officer or a marketing director as needed even just to get some things rocking and rolling. So that would be my ask today on a personal level. If you know somebody who would need um, that three, six month interim role filled, uh, we can bring a whole team to the table and just knock, knock their socks off. I mean, just have a great time ramping up their marketing 
And on a, on a smaller scale, if it's a small business wants to learn more about marketing, we can give them access to these trainings and some of these group environments and we should have some fun that way. Okay. So that's my ask. Um, does any, anybody on the training have an ask today that they would like to ask um, in the chat box or, or verbally before we wrap up? All right. Well, feel free to connect with us in the future. God bless you. See you next Tuesday for how to generate more efficiency with your marketing um, activities and using tools that save you a ton of time. God bless you. Have a great week.